The Fellowship of Guelpha Saga continues with the mayor missing his lunch and the university eventually balancing their books. The Shars University can no longer draw on reserves to manage their million dollar deficits, according to their academic vice president, Gwyneth Chapman. In their budget plans for the next several years, they plan to cut programs and increase tuition fees, especially on international students, to balance their books. Meanwhile, the mayor missed his lunch in the dining district downtown, and Rodrigo of Gawler reviewed bylaws unnecessarily. Can Carly of Classen and the Elder Elves fix the housing cost crisis, and will the university ever balance their books? At the Shars University, the Fat Cats in the Ivory Tower attempted to balance their books. In their budget plan for 2023 to 2027, they're cutting costs and programs to deal with their ongoing deficits. They are facing a total operating budget deficit of $17.3 million this year and $13.5 million deficit next year and more million dollar deficits in the following years. Eventually, they might get a projected $8.7 million surplus in 2027 by cutting costs, programs, and increasing fees in the meantime. According to Gwyneth Chapman, the university's provost and academic vice president, they have, quote, weathered our structural deficit through incremental base budget adjustments and drawing down on reserves. This approach is no longer tenable. The university is now forced to make fundamental changes to transform their business operations to deal with the multi-year million dollar deficits. Chapman explained in their game plan to eventually balance their books. I recognize that change, even as necessary and future oriented, can be difficult. Our commitment to truth telling and reconciliation alongside equity, diversity, and inclusion will provide a lens to guide our efforts. In March 2023, the Ministry of Colleges and Universities announced a continuation of the unfunded tuition freeze for domestic Ontario students. But they did allow an increase of up to 5% for out-of-province domestic students, so the Shires University increased tuition by the full 5% on them whereas undergraduate international enrollment continues to be a priority for the university as their main cash cow program. New international students are now facing a 5% to 12% increase in tuition based on their program, and current students have a 5% increase for all programs. Some international graduate student programs have the largest tuition increase, such as Masters of Engineering tuition going up by 10%, and the Masters of Public Health tuition increasing by 31%. But that's not the end of it, as there's also all the other hidden fees for being a university student. Non-academic student fees are increasing 6.8 to 9.8%, and food services prices are expected to increase 2.5%. Residence fees are increasing by 5%, and family housing for new tenants is going up by 10%. For students who are living in their cars due to the Shire's housing cost crisis, they are also facing increased cost. Yellow and red parking permits will cost 2.6% more, and the hourly parking rate will increase by 8.3%. Campus parking services historically generates $4 million in annual revenue, and with the extra parking fees, they anticipate their revenue will increase to $5.5 million. Back at the Council of Elder Chambers, the mayor watched his European-inspired SimCity deteriorate in front of his eyes. On the faint screen of his Game Boy, he zoomed into the south end of the Shire where several streetlight poles were crumbling down. He called up Electra Electric to get it repaired and chatted with Lee of Dapp, the digital communication specialist, who says there's no cause for alarm. After a conversation with our operations team, I was assured that the poles are structurally safe and secure, he said. The mayor was relieved by the reassurance from Electra, so he took a quick lunch break before his next meeting. He wandered downtown looking for a place to dine, 
but there was nowhere to sit and eat. His favorite places for lunch in the dining district were busy closing their street level patios from the extra fees and taxes, and all the inside seats were taken. Whereas Double Dragon, the best spot to get cheap Chinese takeout, was also closing their doors after 13 years in business. It joins the other dead businesses on the same street, such as Disarray's and the dumpster fire known as the Albion. With nowhere else to eat, the mayor returned to his office, starving from not having eaten any lunch. From all the dead businesses, the streets of downtown were empty and quiet. The mayor could hear his own footsteps as he jogged back to his office in time for his next meeting. But apparently that was not the case, according to Rodrigo of Galler. From all the way up in the northern forest, he claimed that the Shire is in need of noise cameras downtown, similar to the revenue-generating red light cameras. He's also wanting to review the bylaw prohibition on backyard fires, noisy cars, and the sale and setting off of fireworks. Rodrigo of Gawler said these reviews were requested by his constituents in War II, but that's unlikely true since most residents in War II enjoy their illegal fire pits, fireworks, and loud noises on the weekend. The minimum wage earners living in Riverside Park also rely on their fire pits to survive the wintertime. The request of noise cameras is also unlikely to happen since those cameras are not legally allowed in the lands of Ontario yet. Rodrigo of Gawler should be focusing on finding the way home instead since that's why he's still lost in the northern forest. Can Carly of Classen and the Elder Elves fix the housing cost crisis? And will the university ever balance their books? Stay tuned here to see.